Yeah. It's better and better. Yeah. Like eyeshadow. But just Percy, do you want to start us off? Sure. Sure. Do I need anything? Do I need that? Up to you. It's up to you. It's your show. Hey, Stoy, how you doing? Good. Hey, um, uh, how... Actually, um, how has it been your like return to S Seattle? Yeah. And I guess I'm uh, would like to know just how do you think you'll feel when you are on on the court, player in mm -hmm. production, game begins, and you're playing against your old team? Yeah, it um, it feels good to be back, but also very weird. Um, just the the familiarity and the comfort. Um, but then some things are you know different because when I walk in this arena I go to the visitors locker room and not uh the the home locker room and staying at the team hotel and things like that um but it's like a happy sad and I think that's that's really how I feel it's like just just emotional um from everything that I've been able to do here and all the people that I've came across and just tons of appreciation for that and just how do you approach this year um is it a uh a championship or bust because from the outside in, you know, it, you know, just how your team is structured. There's a lot of sort of one-year deals mm -hmm. and it just seems like so much is on this year. Yeah. How do you deal with that? How do you not let that, over, you know, sort of be yeah. the whole, the whole deal? Well, I think, you know, obviously we want to um, be able to win and contend for, for a championship. Uh, but realizing that, you know, when you put all these pieces together in such a short amount of time, it's, it is it is going to take time and making sure that we're able to kind of win the day and continue to to kind of grow um, one practice, one game at a time. Um, it's we had I think last week we had like a few days of practice, which was nice because I was out for half of training camps. Loot was out. Um, so it's it's been exciting. Um, to kind of have a, a different challenge of of making the pieces kind of come together, but um, we're we're getting to where we want to be. Uh, Brianna, since we haven't had a chance to talk to you since you signed, how how difficult was that decision to leave the place where you yeah. kind, of, kind of grew up as a player? Yeah, uh, it, it was a really difficult decision um, for me to to leave Seattle and go to New York, and I think you know it it still is difficult when I think about it. Um, I flew back here after I finished in Fenerbahce and I flew to Seattle and because that's where my house is and all of our stuff. And, um, it, it was those moments where you have a little bit of like self-doubt, like, did I make the right decision? Because now I'm seeing, you know, all my friends and all the, the spots where we used to go and stuff like that. But, um, happy with, with kind of starting a new chapter and, and realizing that, you know, change change isn't always a bad thing and it can be a good thing and I can still have a, a lot of amazing uh memories in Seattle because like you said I I grew up here I got married here I started a family here um and I really came into my own here and that's something that I'll never forget and just a quick follow-up right after you signed you made the comment I think on ESPN that you chose New York because it's a, you wanted to continue to be great did yeah. you feel a better opportunity there to do that than you did in Seattle um, I think, you know, just realizing the the being in one of the largest sports media markets, um, continuing to kind of have that added spotlight, um, not just for me, but for this this entire league and making sure that, you know, we're continuing to get those eyes and, and viewership and realize that, you know, I think we we've seen this crazy number of five percent of of all sports media goes to um, female athletes and women's sports. And, you know, that's something that should be. I don't know, six, 10, 15, um, and, and trying to be a part of that. Hey, Brianna. Um, JJ had her reunion with her old Connecticut teammates on Saturday, even if not as a visitor. Did she have any advice for you about kind of compartmentalizing some of those emotions, or do you think it'll just turn to hoops once we hit tip off tonight? Uh, um, no, we didn't really talk about it. I think it was, you know, JJ had the reunion, but it's a little bit different when you go back home or back where you you've started um it is very interesting that we play connecticut seattle and chicago all all this week um but i think that i'm i'm just gonna try and feel all the feels and and all the emotions and just really take it in because um that's that's what i owe myself and and that's what you know this entire arena deserves as well Thank you. And 
the team also added Marine Johannes to the roster tonight. What have been your early impressions? Because I know today was probably the first time you suited up next to her, but I guess playing against her in the past and what can she add to this team? Um, I think, you know, impressions of Marine are she's flashy. She can obviously shoot. Um, she brings a, a different spark and style to the game, but um, really hasn't been much time that we've ever played together. I don't think we've honestly ever played together. Um, just a lot of playing against each other in the WNBA and, and internationally. Hey, Stewie. Um, just kind of get your emotions going into this game. Um, how did you mentally prepare for tonight, starting from the game last week in the Connecticut up until tonight? I think just <clears throat> making sure that, um, you know, my routine stays the same about the way that I, I prepare myself and knowing that, you know, yes, this is a a very emotional game, important game, um, just for, for both sides coming, kind of coming back home. But um, at the same time, I have a, a job to do on the court and making sure that I'm, I'm as best prepared to do that as possible. Thank you. And um, you were named uh, player of the week earlier, just kind of wanted to hear your thoughts on how much you work to get that honors and what are the plans going for the next season to continue that success? Um, I mean, definitely appreciate the honor. Uh, I think that, you know, it's, it's the start of the season. So um, not, not really thinking too much about it, but wanting to make sure that, that we start strong in, in anything that we do and um, realize that, you know, it's, it's only been week one and I feel like a lot has happened um, and making sure that we kind of just continue that, that momentum throughout. Um, well, today's like tomorrow's the last day of May uh, throughout May. And I guess into June, cause we're here. Jackie. Hey Stewie. Thanks so much for, for being here uh, on the note of, of Maureen Johannes. Uh, she comes to you all after a really difficult situation with the French Federation. And so now that she's with you all, I'm curious how the team welcomed her when she arrived and how prepared are you for her very artsy behind the back? No look passes. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we, we just welcomed her like we would welcome anyone else. Um, happy to have her here and making sure that, uh, she's, she's comfortable and, um, you know, when, when she's ready that she'll be back on the court and, and making an impact with us. And, um, like I said before her, the way that she plays is, is kind of one of a kind. So I think that, you know, everybody's going to, going to enjoy being a part of that. And um, we, we spoke to Han earlier today about how she's adapting to the speed of the WNBA after playing in, in the CBA, uh, the Chinese League, earlier this year. I, I'm just curious if you could explain the ways in which you and the other veterans on this team ha have given her the confidence that she needs while she continues to adjust. I think just continuing to, to kind of... Um help her in any way possible you know she's she's been in the WNBA for a few years now but making sure that when she does get her her moment that she's you know handling it with confidence and and doing what she does best being able to to be such a a tall frame and and be so versatile is is something that's um difficult to guard and especially at, at her height and making sure that um just no matter the bumps in the road that that you'll face throughout the season like I said we're very very early um that she tries to remain the same. Thank you. We have time for one more from Jeff and Brian on Zoom. Thank you, Brianna. Good afternoon. Uh, good to see you again. Um, you know, so much has been made about your return to Seattle tonight, how it was home for you, it was where you grew up, is where you found your professional footing. My question is on the present and we, what we all hope is the future. How has New York, even in such a small sample size, felt like home to use thus far in the early going? Um, I think New York has, has kind of felt like home. Um, it just feels like I'm, I, I came back if that makes sense. I know I'm from Syracuse and, and upstate, but, uh, really throughout my early basketball career, I was around New York city a lot, um, the Philly area with AU and then going to UConn. Um, so spending a lot of, a lot of time in the, the tri-state area and, um, happy to be around my family you know that's that's one thing is when I was making this free agency decision is thinking about 
um, my grandparents and and them being able to come and they've been able to to come to New York twice. They're they're there right now with Ruby watching her um, while while we're here in Seattle. So um, experiences like that to have them be around more is something that I I definitely love having. Appreciate your time and insight. Good luck out there tonight. We'll finish with Brian. Hi, Brianna. Um, so far, the Liberty are third in the WNBA in defense. What do you think has been working well for the group so far? And what do you think is, I guess, what do you, what do you think you guys can get better next on that side of the ball? Um, I'm surprised that we're third. I think that there's there's a lot that we can continue to get better at. And I think, you know, that just comes with with a new team and, and players that um, haven't had many reps together is making sure that we just have one another's trust and, and backside and especially when we're out of rotations, but uh, communicating through the the bumps and, and the bruises of this process. And um, we have length and we have versatility. So that's something that we can continue to, to capitalize on. But, um, you know, we're, we're nowhere near where we want to be, which is encouraging for us. Thanks. And my last one is um, you'll get a chance to match up with Ezzy tonight. Just how exciting is it to go against one of your former teammates and a player who's really started to blossom in the league this season? Uh, it's yeah, it's going to be great to to go against Ezzy. I think that, you know, just the way that she's continued to to kind of develop. I mean, having Sadie's be back in Seattle, I think, is something that um everyone is is really happy about because of the impact that she can make on the court but between the both of them I think you know as he's really starting to to come into her own and um carrying herself with confidence and, and I tried to tell her you know when she was playing overseas when she's representing uh basketball Australia and you know now in Seattle is she she has these opportunities to really do what she wants on the court and and she just needs to take advantage of it thanks good luck tonight Great. Thanks, Suey. Next up, we'll have. And we'll get started with Jackie whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Hi, Sandy. Thank you for being here with us. I think where I want to start is uh, regarding MJ. I, I just want to know, you know, do you expect her to get any run out there? And can you explain sort of the process or what the process looks like to, to get her integrated? Yeah, look, um, you know, obviously she's just come off a long season and she's just come off a long flight, uh, including to Seattle uh, from New York. And she's a little fatigued and we don't want to rush her back. Like she'll warm up today and we'll just see how she feels. Will we play her? Doubtful, but you never know. I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I, I know the, the focus is usually on focusing on yourselves, but I'm just curious what you think is required when you're facing a team that doesn't have a win yet and might be a little bit hungry? Well, you, you certainly can't have complacency, complacency at any time in, in this league because when, when you're not focused, that's when you can lose to anybody. Um, so, look, we just prepare like it's a, you know, it's another game for us to get better and uh, we always respect all of our opponents and, you know, they can be dangerous. This is their home court now and, um, you know, obviously Jewel Lloyd has, has had it started off really well. She's a key one, but, you know, they've got players around it too. I mean, if they can get going, uh, Sammy and Kia Nurse and obviously Ezzy, uh, they can be quite dangerous. So, look, we just got to make sure that we're locked in. And last one for me, uh, we spoke to Han earlier today uh, about this season and her patience when it comes to adjusting back to the WNBA's speed. I I'm just curious how you might see this matchup against Seattle as a good opportunity for her to get some run and, and continue to gain that confidence. Yeah, look, I suppose every game you just have to wait and see, I mean, how the game um, evolves and uh, you know, obviously we have a lot of depth in our post players too, but, you know, of course we'd love to get Han in there and, you know, for her, it's about getting confidence. I think she sees the ball goes through the hole. I think with any player, it's, they just grow in confidence and, you know, she's staying ready. So she's controlling what she can control with her preparation um, in practice and shoot around and, and video. So, um, you know, we just want her to relax and, and keep believing in herself when she does get on the court. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck tonight. Yeah. Um, how do you think her game is going to translate to this league and, and like what areas do you think she needs to work on? 
yeah, look, love, love Jade. Uh, she's, uh, you know, she was the one, like, one of the last players we had to cut last year with the Opals, but she's still uh, such a key person for us. And I see really bright futures, not just for the Australian team, but also Seattle in, in the WNBA. And she really grew last year as a player. I asked her coach to play a little bit more as a point guard spot. She's young. She's 20. Uh, so, but she's been, you know, playing in the, the National League back home in, in the WNBL. And I think when you're playing against the best players, it helps her improve a game. And I thought she took giant strides this year. Um, just with, with more uh, her composure, she's great in the open court. Uh, we know that she's great speed, but now it's just, you know, understanding the game a little bit more. And I think she's getting more and more consistent. So I'm excited just to continue to watch her development. And uh, a similar question with Desi, you know, it seems like, yeah, it's, that she's poised for that next step. What does that next step for her look like? Uh, look, for Ezzy, Ezzy's uh, the sky's the limit for Ezzy. I think you've seen that here, what she's capable of. I think really the only thing is confidence for me. It's She's got to be keep believing in herself and, um, you know, obviously one of the best best players on this team, She, you know, that comes with responsibility too and she can't be uh, afraid of failure. So I say to all my players, it's like, you just got to go out there and compete and play hard. But, you know, Ezzy's another one. I mean, what a sensational person, but a really amazing player. And I just love to see how she's growing. And I, I think for now, it's just her backing herself a little bit more. Yeah, no, it's great. Look, I, um, you know, obviously being the Australian coach too, we do have a tournament during the year, which, you know, they don't need required to go back to, but I want them to play in the best league in the world because I think that elevates their development. Um, and even though Jade hasn't had many opportunities yet, I know she will. This is the start of her career in the WNBA. She's 20. Uh, she's been playing in the WNBL back in home, you know, our national league, our top league for many years now. And that helps. Um, but when you compete against the very best, I think you can grow in confidence. You kind of know what you need to work on. Uh, you're a full-time professional now. Um, so it certainly helps that we've got eight players in the WNBA now from Australia. And I think that's fantastic. And, I, I see more and more in the future because we do have a, a great, some great young talents coming through. Miles. Hey, Sandy. Um, it's a nice. small sample size, of course, but Seattle comes into tonight playing at the fastest pace in the W while you guys come in in last place in that category. How much emphasis is there on controlling them in transition and picking your own spots to run when you get the ball? Yeah, I don't like that we're last in pace, but uh, something that we can certainly work on. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, Trans D is one of it. I don't think we've been great in that um, in the games that we've played. It's an area we need to improve on. Um, you know, Seattle are trying to play with their their athleticism and getting out and run and getting easy baskets there. So it's a good test for us to continue to work on our game. You know, at both both ends of the floor, and you know, we just got to get stops, and then we have to make sure that we're running, and we've got to run better than what we have. So. Early days, we're still growing as a team, but hopefully we can make giant strides tonight in, in just getting more points in fast break. And did you feel like the second half of that Connecticut game looked a little bit more like what the potential is in terms of that transition game? Yes, no, definitely. And it comes from our defense. And uh, just our defense in the first 20 wasn't very good against Connecticut. We weren't being aggressive. So we have to be the aggressor and then get out and run. And that's when we're at our best. Um, you know, obviously we've got a very talented team, but... Um, you know, it, it's still learning to play with each other on the offensive end, but in transition, that's kind of easy when you're outnumbered. So it really starts on the defensive end, and that's what we've been preaching. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Fifi. Hey, Coach. Um, the Storm here are still looking for a win, but they started out the gate uh, ranking near the top in steals and blocks. What do you kind of think makes them so tough on that side of the court? Well, they have athleticism. You know, uh, that versatility. You know, Ezzy's obviously one of the quickest post players in the league. You know, Jewel is a great defender. Uh, they've just got kids. I mean, not, they're not really kids, but they've got a young team that's just going out there and competing. And I think that's, you know, Noe's just, just trying to invest in that, keep teaching them that. And they're, they're the teams that are always dangerous because uh, they've got nothing to lose in, in that regard. And, and they just got to, they, we know that they're going to come and play really hard against us. So it, it's more of our mindset, making sure that we're ready for it and we're not surprised by it. Right. And uh, you mentioned Jewel Lloyd. She's also had a great start to the season. Um, what kind of 
what what's kind of, what will you say will be the matchup for her tonight to try to get the win? And what things do you want to carry over from that second half to the Suns game to tonight trying to trying to contain her? Yeah, look, I don't think you can stop Jewel. I think you have to try and slow Jewel. Um, and it requires team defense. You know, obviously we'll have certain matchups on her, but it'll require team defense because she's so, you know, she's special at what she does and she has a big responsibility on that team. And so we have to be locked in and making sure that we're making her settle for shots that we want her to take other than the open ones. Um, so, yeah, it's a great challenge for us again tonight. Thank you. Good luck tonight. Brian, and then we'll finish with Jeff. Hi, Sandy. Um, in each game this season, the group has won the rebounding battle. Jez, how important is it for the group to sort of stay locked in and committed on the board so that way they reduce second chance opportunities and complete defensive possessions? Yeah, look, it's big. And we've spoken about it all season long. We have a big team. We should be rebounding well. Okay, that's an emphasis for us. It's making sure we're finishing plays, but also rebounding allows us hopefully to get out. And it's an area we're still working on. It just began getting out and running and pushing. Um, but yeah, you know, our expectation is to make sure we out rebound all our opponents. Thanks. And um, I, I, I looked up, I looked this up earlier. You guys are currently third in the W in defense. And we asked Brianna about it a minute ago. Where do you think the group can get even better on that side of the ball? Uh, in all areas. <laughs> um, yeah, we're still growing. Uh, consistency. I think just being consistent and aggressive for 40 minutes, you know, 20 minutes. We played good defense for 20 minutes against Connecticut, uh, but we've got to put it together, you know, a, a whole game. And and you're going to make – I know you're going to make some errors here and there, but covering it up with our activity. And I thought you, you saw that in that last game. And we didn't have that, you know, sense of urgency – um, in everything that we do and, and making sure we're taking pride on that side of the ball. All right. Thank you, Sandy. Good luck tonight. Thank you, Brian. Coach, uh, good evening or afternoon, as the case may be for you. Uh, my question, again, concerns Marie Johannes. I'm sure you're, uh, you're, you're almost annoyed about hearing about Marine at this point. But um, at the same time, she has that New York experience, but it's safe to say that this is a very different team than when she left it. So as the Liberty are constructed now, how do you see Marine fitting into this current lineup and rotation? And what would your expectations be for her once she reaches uh, her full potential, full preparation, full throttle? Yeah, look, Marie, um, um, Marine is, you know, I love Marine. Um, she's a she's a key player for us. She will be one of the first players off the bench, just just how it is. That's how much we believe in her. Um, you know, at the moment, we only got two really point guards handling. Not that Marine loves to play the point guard, but she's another guard that's a great playmaker and, and also scorer, but we, we see what she's capable of. So, you know, I'm excited just to get, you know, she, she was in shoot around today. So she remembers some of the plays, some of them are new, but uh, she just needs a little bit of time to get comfortable. But in the end, I just want Marine to be Marine. She's a very special player. Some of the stuff that she does is, you know, it doesn't surprise me. I've seen her do it for many, many years now. But, I, like, as a, you know, I'm like a fan when I watch her. Um, so we just want her to go out and play. And some days that obviously is, uh, that's great. And some days she might make, not make all her shots, and that's okay because we want Marine being aggressive. You're the proud of the Marine, they say. And uh, my other question concerns uh, Brianna Stewart. Um, and, of course, today marks her homecoming. Obviously, again, it's a very small sample size. We keep repeating that. But um, early on, it just seems that the way this team flows, where Brianna goes, this team is gone. Look no further and scoring half the points in the first victory this season. So what can you say about the way Brianna has kind of taken over his team through both her on-court through both her on court prowess and perhaps her off-court leadership as well, helping, you know, some of the younger players get things together, kind of get things, get things rolling. How has Brianna impacted this team so far and really lived up to her billing? Well, I mean, she's she's pretty special. Uh, you know, we're, we're very lucky to have her in New York and, and I know she's coming home and hopefully, you know, everyone here appreciates what that she did for this team for many, many years. And we're hopeful that she can do the same for ours. But, you know, what I love, there's so many things I love about Stewie, but she's a champion. She's a winner. She's a leader. Um but she's so selfless. She wants to play basketball in the right way. She, um, you know, people follow her, but she she knows, you know, how to to help people to elevate their game as well. And and um, it's been fun. You know, I feel this is the first time I've coached Stewie, but I, I feel like I've coached her for a while. It's just been really easy. 
Um, and that's nice. And that's for all the players that we brought in. It's nice. You know, we all have got a common goal where we know we're still a work in progress, but you know, our leaders are leading and um, you know, and that's, that's pretty special. Appreciate your time and insight. Good luck out there tonight. Thanks guys. Thank you all for joining. We'll send a copy of the recording shortly.